Uh, good morning and welcome to the County Commission December 12th meeting. If you'd stand for the pledge, please. Uh, good morning and again welcome that would uh, remind you to silence your cell phones please and meeting documents are available to com next Commissioner Bender and if you need a listening device Craig or Carol could help you with that with that I'd entertain a motion to go into routine business and to approve the agenda so moved second a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Any changes, corrections? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item two is to approve the commission minutes of 12 5. Make a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the December 5th minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Uh, bills to be paid at three million four hundred eighty seven thousand nine hundred and twenty two dollars and eighty five cents pay the bills Second I have a motion and a second any comments Commission Commission <laughs> mr. Litz <laughs> uh, Good morning Commission Bob Litz from the auditor's office just a couple of comments on the bills here uh, today uh, We have our uh, monthly uh, payment to the state for motor vehicle fees of uh, two million seven hundred and eighty thousand uh, in fifty dollars and forty nine cents, I tried to talk AP into not sending the check. Uh, I thought that'd take care of us for a little bit, but they they refused. So we're going to pay the state. Uh, also notable on there would be the Armor Correctional Health Services. If you add up the management fee, the medical health care, and the true up uh, this month for medical uh, jail medical, our expenses are two hundred sixty six thousand three hundred fifty seven dollars and thirty four cents. Uh, also, one other thing of note on here uh, that caught my eye was uh, uh, we had an expert uh, witness uh, through the public defender's office, and for one month in the month of October, that bill was $26,295.56. Thank you, Bob. Any questions for Mr. Litz? Thank you. If not, we have a motion and a second to approve the bills. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item four is uh, reports that are filed. First is a ju juvenile detention center report for November of this year. Uh, item five, personnel actions. N item A is to consider a motion to approve <coughs> routine personnel action. Is there a motion? Make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve routine personnel. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Uh, item six is RDID uh, number 43676 uh, for a owner occupied status at 4509 South Magnolia Avenue for $977.87. Make a motion Olivia. to approve. Okay. Second. Anyone have any questions for Olivia? If not, uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Uh, item seven is to authorize the county auditor to post notice of hearing on December 26 to consider supplements to various 2017 budgets and funds. Do you have any comments about the, that, Bob or Kim? Kim? Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Um, we are just requesting authorization from you to post the notice of hearing. The hearing for the budget supplements will be scheduled for Tuesday, December 26th. Um, a list of the requested supplements was attached to your briefing notice, and I can answer any questions if you have those. Any questions for Kim? Do you think that is going to be exactly what it's going to be, or will we see changes even up to that point of... Um, I think this would be any changes we would see would be possible reductions in the requests based on um, the bills that are uh, submitted for payment in the next two weeks. Okay, thank you. Thanks for your work on that. Make a motion to approve, um, authorize the auditor to publish notice of the public hearing. Thank you. Is there okay. a second? We have a motion to approve that notice of hearing on December 26th for 2017 budgets. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item B is to authorize the auditor to publish a notice of hearing on January 2nd for retail on sale liquor license applications submitted by Gerritsen Sportsman Club. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to approve. Thank second. you. Motion to second. Any questions for Olivia? If not, all those in favor say, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. There's no planning and zoning notices. Number nine is petition for compromise, DPN N O. Uh, number 30117 for $20,000. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Carol Muller, Commission Administrative Officer. Before you today is you have the Compromise of Lean DPNO 30117 in the amount of $20,000. You have the opportunity to read through the materials. I want to explain why you're getting one more sheet of, Thanks, of paper that's out there. The applicant provided to us this morning and the, a copy of a letter that he has from his attorney at the time when he went through bankruptcy. And I'll let you take a few minutes as you take and read through that, and otherwise I can just summarize what, what we have here. We have an applicant who has incurred expenses through a hospitalization that Minnehaha County paid. Um, at that time, that was applied as a lien. At a similar time to that, the, the applicant was also going through bankruptcy. And that is what the letter that you're receiving states that the, uh, uh, his attorney had actually talked to Gary Caldwell, who was um, about three state's attorneys back, I believe it was, um, <coughs> to go through and, and talk about this. So it raises some additional questions as to if the lien was accurately applied. Um, he certainly has been under the assumption based upon what his attorney had told him from this letter that that was taken care of. So I'm gonna leave it at that particular moment. <coughs> he is closing on a house, he's building a house, and uh, is closing on that house next Monday, which is when this came up, because the lien is still with the Register of Deeds. Uh, Maggie, have you had an opportunity to see this letter? I have, I looked at it this morning okay. uh, about half an hour ago. Do you have any questions or concerns about it? Um, well, <laughs> I will, I can say this, Mr. Chairman, um, because of the uh, timing uh, within the last uh, half an hour that I've reviewed it, um, what I can't uh, tell you is um, what took place after this conversation um, that's articulated in the letter. So um, what I don't know is what action the commission uh, back in 2001 would have taken. Um, uh, we just haven't had time to go back and see what's in the minutes. Um, but I think that um, you can certainly take um, uh, the substantive nature of the letter as to what it appears. Um, I, I think you can draw some conclusions about what might have happened, um, but we just don't know for sure because we haven't had time to to look at the minutes and I further haven't uh, I I have to believe that the statute the statutory authority was the same uh, in statute at the time back in 2001 um, under 28 14 15 the authority that you have to compromise mm -hmm. um, but I haven't had time to double check that either does anyone have any questions about this particular piece before we maybe ask for more of the details <coughs> Commissioner? Uh, this is for the state's attorney also. Uh, uh, does bankruptcy discharge the county lien on these things? That is another issue that I haven't been able to research specifically this morning, but I believe that it's a timing issue. Um, liens are statutory in nature, so they attach to property. Um, the the um, uh, the question, I believe, is a matter of timing. Was the lien perfected uh, at prior to the time of the filing of the petition in bankruptcy? So I think that um, it's a timing issue. And further then, there's another question in my mind that I would need to resolve as to if the um, personal liability is discharged in bankruptcy whether or not the lien survives. And I think that that probably too is a question of perfection. 
So whether or not the lien was recorded prior to the filing of the bankruptcy. And so that may, obviously it's more almost uh, 18 years ago, but that may have impacted the decision that was made as articulated in the letter by counsel at the time at the state attorney's office. Carol, would you reiterate again uh, when the closing is on this? The clo home? His closing is next Monday. Okay. <clears throat> Does anyone have any questions for Carol, Commissioner Karski? I'm just kind of putting together a timeline. It looks like the, he says the bankruptcy was filed on December 28th of 2000. Um, 215 of 01 is when the compromise was filed in our system, or that's the way it looks. After it, he has a discharge of debtor in April of 01, meaning I would assume that that was, I don't know if that was filed, that discharge of debtor was against the county or the hospital. I'm not certain which one that is. Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. So the discharge of debts would be as to all uh, debts that were part of the petition or uh, outside of the petition but by federal law wrapped into the bankruptcy even if they weren't listed in the petition. Okay. So uh, the discharge is as to not just one specific debt but typically as to all the debts that were under the jurisdiction of the bankruptcy court. Okay. Uh, yeah, this letter answers a lot of questions, or at least you know, questions that I had in my mind. Um, is there a statute of limitations on if this was supposed to be discharged and we paid it when it when it should have been discharged? Do we have recourse back to whatever hospital we paid this to? Mr. Chairman, I don't think that there's a necessarily a statute of limitations on liens. Liens are statutory in nature, and the the uh, the termination of a lien typically um, uh, is uh, upon the death of an individual. So that's the easy answer, Ms. <laughs> uh, Commissioner. Um, so as far as you know, the specifics of of you know what all transpired here unfortunately due to the passage of time you know I don't think I can answer you know what exactly was intended here but you know and then as far as a recourse against the hospital um, I think that it's my understanding that uh, that what happened here is it appears to me that um, the county apparently back in 2001 had uh, reduced this down to twenty thousand dollars so I mean, the hospital was coming to the county to pay the debt by statute as, as, as poor relief, so. Commissioner Bender. So just as a clarification, the, the county doesn't have recourse against the hospital because this, this was an obligation of the county. Correct. Um, so the question is whether the bankruptcy affected the county's lien on this individual. Mm -hmm. That's the way I understand it. And again, uh, a, th that is a question of timing, mm -hmm. so I believe. And so again, I, as I was handed this, I haven't had probably the time uh, that I needed to map this out, but it appears to me that as Commissioner Karski's articulated, the bankruptcy was filed in December of 2000, um, the debts were discharged in April of 2001, and that this lien, uh, is my understanding, was placed of record in January of 2001, so after the filing of the bankruptcy. Now, the only question that I can't answer for you here on the fly is, um, is, is that definitive? Is the, is the lien absolutely discharged? because of the fact that it's a statutory lien, it attaches to property, while the personal obligation to pay uh, may have been discharged, whether or not the lien survives the bankruptcy. It appears to me, because of the fact that it was filed after the bankruptcy was filed, th that gives me uh, a belief that the, the, the lien was discharged. Um, but at the same time, I, you know, I, I haven't uh, had the time to absolutely research that but my the conclusion that I've had of what I've been able to review statutorily today is that because of the timing because of the fact that the the uh, the
bankruptcy was filed first that I think that the Commission has some level of, of, uh, of uh, standing to believe that it was discharged. Now, the other part of this is this letter and the fact that there was a, a representation, um, as you, you see articulated here, that the lien uh, was going to be removed. Mr. Also Africa. in 2011, according to the notes, uh, we, as the county commission, did a, quote, global reduction of liens to $20,000. So it would seem to me that that was the second or third step in this conversation that would verify that that was disclosed and the letter is accurate. Okay. Other questions? Do you want to continue with your presentation or um, anyone have any specific questions about what's going on with this letter that just showed up? Well, I'm, my impression would be that I would agree with the state's attorney that it's likely that this lien was not effective based on the timing. Um, and clearly that was a representation made um, you know, I mean, la lawyers can say anything they want in letters, and then when you don't have the next piece of the puzzle, sometimes you don't know exactly what the response was. But I think, gave, given the timing here, that um, it appears that um, Arlene was not timely, f was not filed in time to survive the bankruptcy. And uh, given the fact that uh, this gentleman's purchasing a home, will become a taxpayer um, in the county, that he has shown um, he paid off. 100% of what was owed to Turner County. He did make some payments for the assistance that he received in 93 and 98. Um, I would be willing to make a motion to um, uh, discharge the debt in full. I'd second that. We have a motion and a second, but before we do that, uh, the petitioner does have the ability to, to make any comments. And again, you do not need to identify yourself. Uh, you can stay where you're at. You can stay seated. If you'd like to make a comment, we'd love to hear from you. You don't need to make any formal presentation in front of the microphone. So if you could speak up and you can sit down, you don't have to stand up if you prefer. So please, we'd be happy to hear from you. Well, we have all the, unfortunately, black and white history, and we can see uh, the steps that you've taken over the years to make things much better in your life and become very productive. And you've made a, a positive attempt, in my mind, to try to solve most of the issues. Um, I don't know that this letter changes my mind at all uh, in that conversation. So we have a motion and a second to compromise, and I'm not sure I, I have a cold, so I'm not sure I heard an amount. Nothing, Just compromise in full. Okay. Yep. That's correct, compromise in full for no payment. Commissioner? My comment would be that the, the public defender fees that are from quite some time ago have all been covered with payments. So the only thing that wasn't completely covered was, was the hospitalization and the poor relief, which are also from a long time ago. So, which are in question. You asked for the question, or I said they were in question. Oh, <laughs> I told you I have a cold. I can't no, hear a I thing. <laughs> we um, all do. Anyone else have any questions? If not, we have a motion and a second to compromise the lien in full and discharge the lien. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. The lien's been discharged and you're free to buy a house. Uh, item 10. Is opportunity for public comment for 
any uh, person who may have comments on an item that is not on the agenda, we'd be happy to hear from you now. No one's moving, so we'll go to regular business. Item 10 is uh, consider a motion to appoint two applicants to the Planning Commission for a four-year appointment. Scott Anderson. Good morning, Scott Anderson, Planning Director for the County, and uh, today I have an item for your consideration. We have two Planning Commissioners whose terms are expiring, Mike Seifer and Becky Randall. Uh, Mike Seifer has chosen not to um, seek reappointment. Uh, that leaves a position that needs to be filled uh, and two potentially. We had four people that applied to submitted their name in consideration to be a planning commissioner. Uh, I have attached their basically biography sheet that the county application for your review. I did contact all of them, <coughs> inform them of today's meeting, indicated it wasn't mandatory, but if they would like to attend, they sure could. And if they did, that it would be likely that you would call upon them to introduce themselves and um, explain or share with the commission their interest in wanting to serve as the planning on the planning commission. This is a four-year commission uh, appointment to the planning commission. Um, so it would end, uh, it would start on January 1st of 2018 and it would go through uh, December 31st of 2021. So I'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions of Scott? It's awesome to have four people uh, apply yeah. for two positions. Um, I recognize one of the planning individuals here in the audience. If you would like to come forward and make a couple of comments, we'd be happy to hear from you since you made all the effort to get here. <laughs> and thank you for your service. You're welcome. I'm Becky Randall. I currently serve on the Planning Commission and I am seeking reappointment. I have really appreciated my time on the Commission. I feel I've learned a lot. It, it, there's, I'm sure like on this board or commission, there, that first year is a little bit of a learning curve, but I appreciate it. I feel I have a good understanding of the um, county planning needs and our our vision for the future and how we can determine appropriate land use for that future planning. So thank you. Do you have any questions? Any questions of Becky? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Barth. Uh, Becky, uh, remind us which part of the county that you live in. I live on Logan Township, so I live in the far northeast part of the county. I'm just a few miles from the Minnesota border. So Thank that's you. where I hail from. Anyone else have any questions for Becky? Thank you, and again, okay. thank you thank for you your service. Thank you very much. Um, does the planning board have recommendations or? The Planning Commission uh, did not make any recommendations. We typically don't bring the, the candidates for their consideration. It goes directly to this board for your consideration because it's a county commission appointment. Yep. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, having served on the Planning Commission for a while, I'd first like to just say thank you to Mike Seifer for 20 years of serving and thank him for leaving. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you can be on a job too long, and I think that he reached the point <laughs> where he felt he had done his thing and uh, thought maybe someone else should uh, uh, should uh, step forward and uh, uh, be educated in, in all of these things. And uh, I will say that uh, I've talked to uh, a couple of our other applicants. I, I talked to uh, the uh, uh, Adam Morehauser, uh, and I talked to the Angela Landine uh, person, and I think I know Ryan uh, from previous uh, uh, times. Um, Angela has an interesting uh, uh, past in that she uh, worked promoting uh, wind uh, energy and testified at a number of counties across the state, including Lincoln County, uh, as an advocate for wind. She's no longer in that, in that business. Uh, Ryan uh, Vandervliet, his wife, I believe, is a FFA uh, uh, instructor at Tri Valley, and uh, they have uh, some a cattle barn. And Adam uh, uh, Morehauser uh, 
It works on the family farm up uh, north and a little bit east of, of Crooks. And uh, he's, uh, the advantage of Ryan and Adam is that they're uh, young farmers uh, in, our, in our county. And uh, I think Ryan, Cindy, he, he's up more like in Buffalo Township, isn't he? Uh, I, I think he, I could be wrong, but I think he lives in Colton. Yeah, lives in Colton up, up that away. Anyway, so uh, I think we are r truly blessed to have wonderful candidates here, wonderful candidates, and uh, to uh, make a decision between them uh, is uh, challenging, but that's why they pay me the big bucks, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, and I, uh, I guess if someone else wants to say something first, uh, otherwise I, I would uh, place someone in nomination. Commissioner Heiberger. Just a, a comment that I misspoke, that Ryan lives in Humboldt. I believe he lived in Colton for a while, but he does, his address says Humboldt, so I misspoke. No problem. Anyone else have any comments? I'll make a comment. Just that I, I too, am just was really thrilled that there was four people that applied for this position because when it first came out, you were always, I'm always worried that is anybody going to try to apply for this? And these are agricultural people that are at least have an interest in a background in agriculture, which most of our zoning issues are rural issues. Um, I think we have a great selection, and I hope that when we do this again in four years that w or two years or whenever we do it, that we have a large group of people to pick from. Um, I do know several of people on here, and I think all of them would be great candidates. So. Okay. Mr. Barth, did you have a comment? Well, again, it's, it's really tough to uh, pick here. The, the two gentlemen are both township uh, supervisors, and uh, uh, the woman has expertise in an area that's not represented on our our commission, as uh, you know, in the wind uh, area, and has been to planning commission meetings across the street. However, uh, she does live in uh, Sioux Falls, as do I and uh, uh, Paul Cosboth, who are on the planning commission, and so. Um, I decided that it might be better to have another one from the rural area, and I'm. I would like to nominate uh, Adam uh, Morehouser, uh, who lives north and east of Crooks, um, to to be on the commission. Are there any other nominations? Is there a second. <laughs> second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second for Adam Morehauser. Um, is there another nomination? Uh, I just would make a comment. I don't, I, I really, I had decided that I thought we needed another rural representative as well just because of the diversity and, um, and, and I've, I really was torn between two very qualified uh, candidates with very similar um, experiences, but I, I would be happy to support Mr. Morehauser and I had hope uh, Mr. Vanderlee would apply the next time we have an opening. So. And my assumption would be is that we're also reappointing Becky Randall. That would be my preference. Yes, sir. Okay. Do we have a second? We do. Oh, actually, do we? Did we have an individual appointment for Becky? I'll make that motion. I didn't hear that in Jeff's. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it either. So. No. <coughs> um, we have a motion and a second for both Becky Randall and Adam yes. Morehouse yeah. Hauser. Uh, any other comments or questions? After we vote, I do have another comment. All those in favor of the two candidates say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes for Becky and Adam. And Becky, again, thank you for your awesome service. We appreciate that. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, Barth. I would just point out that, uh, you know, I hope that folks that didn't get in this time will continue to keep an eye on this and, and perhaps apply. And uh, Angela and Dean uh, actually on her application said she would be interested in being on the uh, weed and pest board. So, uh, you know, we, uh, we <coughs> regularly have opportunities on one board or another here in the county. and. Uh, Keep an eye on it and uh, put your name in. We need you. Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll go to item number 11. Briefing on the jail bond sale. Mr. Litz. Morning, Commission. Bob Litz again. And uh, like uh, Gerald uh, told you, I'm 
here today to give a, a briefing on uh, what took place on December 5th, the sale of the limited general obligation certificates of participation, uh, that's a mouthful, series 2017, uh, here forth known as the certificates uh, for the Minnehaha jail project took place on December 5th, 2017. Commissioner Bender and myself signed the sale documents at uh, Doherty Company offices in Sioux Falls on that day. And the sale was managed by the Sioux Falls office of Doherty Company LLC. And representatives of that firm are present uh, today to comment and answer questions you might have. I have Ray Woodson and Tom Grimman. And I would have you know that Tom has his avocado green Yoda socks on with the ear attachment, so he's ready for you. Um, there were six bids received that day, with the low bid being from Piper Jaffray with a true interest cost of 2.976%. Because the true interest cost takes into account the time value of money, it is what is used to determine the best bid as opposed to average coupon, net interest costs, or all-inclusive costs. Since a large portion of the certificates were sold at a premium, it was necessary to decrease the principal size of the issue to $43,255,000, which changed the true interest cost slightly to 2.987. This allows the county to have $45,604,652.95, and that's net of the issuance costs uh, for design and construction. Uh, there will be interest earnings on the deposit that decline with the pending construction withdrawals. These interest earnings will be subject to arbitrage, and the interest rates for the deposits are not known as of today. Uh, the proceeds will be deposited with our trustee on December 28, 2017, and available for approved expenses to be paid on the jail expansion project. And immediately available, uh, uh, the bills uh, will be paid by wire on the 29th, the next day. Uh, right now, we're sitting with about 1.2 million, could go up to 1.5 million estimate on the bills payable that day, uh, depending on if the architects get something in on time. Included in that will be the parking lot, reimbursement costs for the uh, cost of issuance, and some design costs. I'm available for questions, as are uh, friends from uh, Doherty Company today. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Woody or Tom, do you have any comments? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chairman. No, I'm, you know, be seen, not heard. That's uh, my mom philosophy. So uh, not really. It was an uh, excellent sale, I guess I will say that. Uh, we had uh, seven bidders that were looking at it. Wells pulled their bid back at the last second, uh, so we ended up uh, ended up with the bidders that we ended up with. But it you know it looks great. Um, they did what I like to see, and that is they gave us the two ninety nine price. You know that that one cent always looks better, right? So we're under three percent, <laughs> and you can say we we're under three percent, and uh, and for twenty year paper, that's very good. That's yeah. that's an excellent. Well, thank you for your help in managing that sale. Any other questions from the commissioners? If not, we'll go to item 12. 12 is to request approval to pay Minneapolis County Water Corporation to relocate a utility. DJ Boothy. Good morning, Good morning. Commissioners. DJ Boothy, Highway Superintendent. Make sure I have my the right briefing memo to speak off of here. Uh, so the County Highway Department is looking at doing a reconstruction project on County Highway 137 north of Crooks uh, in the next two uh, construction seasons. Uh, prior to construction, uh, a lot of times what we have to do is relocate some existing utilities and statute provides for uh, a county or any government agency to ask a private utility to relocate uh, if they're within uh, the, the agency's right of way. In some cases when uh, the utilities are not within the right-of-way and they still need to be relocated for grading or other reasons, uh, that government agency can, respons can be responsible for those costs. And that's the case with uh, the Minnehaha County uh, Rural Water Corporation. Uh, they have some existing utility or some existing easements that they uh, reside within and, and we need to do some grading uh, to take out some uh, vertical curve areas. And so there's uh, some costs that, that the county is gonna be responsible for. So uh, they sent us an agreement and, and we went through that with our state attorney's office and, and revised the agreement. Uh, the way that the agreement is, is structured right now is 44% uh, of their uh, relocations are within an easement that the county is gonna be responsible for. We don't know exactly what those costs are gonna be. We have an estimate of what they're gonna be, but we don't know what the exact costs are until construction is over. So the uh, the agreement says that we'll, um, 
reimburse them 44% of their construction costs uh, for their relocation project and and uh, they will relocate prior to construction. They're already actually out there uh, doing some relocation work and so we don't expect the timing to be any kind of a concern before construction is set to start next spring. Um, our, our rough estimate right now based off of, of their engineer's estimate is just under $69,000 of a cost for Minnehaha County. Uh, their total cost is uh, looking to be about $160,000. So, um, if you have any questions, I can try to answer them now. Otherwise, uh, look for, or I would ask for a motion to uh, approve the agreement as it's as it's written out. Any questions for DJ? I'll move to approve the agreement. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the uh, agreement to relocate the utility. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item 13 is to request an approval to amend uh, professional services agree agreement with IMS uh, Infrastructure Management Services. Commissioners, uh, today we're looking for your approval on an amendment with our agreement with IMS. Uh, they did our payment management survey this summer. Uh, the, uh, the evaluation of the data that they collected is taking longer than what was expected, and so they requested uh, uh, an extension to their agreement. Their original interim agreement completion date was November 4th. Uh, that's come and gone, and so they're looking for or asking for a new interim completion date of February 2nd of 2018. Uh, this amendment does not change the actual final completion date of December 30th, 2019. And so uh, that being said, we're asking for your approval to amend the agreement uh, with the interim completion date. Any questions for DJ? Make a motion. Oh, go ahead. I have a question, I guess. Uh, uh, DJ, amending this uh, uh, to give them more time, are they giving us any benefit because of us giving them more time at their request? Uh, Commissioner, the simple answer is, is no. Uh, we asked them to complete this step of the agreement uh, by a certain date, and they weren't able to perform that. Uh, there's a number of reasons that they weren't able to perform it, uh, one being they had another client, a lar very large client, um, uh, that they were working on completing before ours were a really small co client for them. And so uh, my, my personal guess would be that we probably took a back seat to one of their larger clients. Uh, and the second thing that uh, has taken them an extended period of time is uh, their QA, QC portion is taking a lot longer than what they thought. Um, the, the numbers have come back and originally our overall systematic wide uh, uh, payment condition index was a 69 three years ago, which is a pretty decent score. We were happy with that. Uh, three years later this summer, uh, when they evaluated it, our, our condition index was a 78. And so the, the rate of increase um, is, is really higher than what they've ever seen before. It's an extremely large uh, rate of increase. Uh, we were looking at probably expecting to be around 73 or something like that. So. Uh, they're really taking their time going through each an in individual segment looking to make sure there's no errors in their data. And, and so the QAQC is taking a lot longer than what they expected. Mr. Chairman, I certainly uh, appreciate that, uh, DJ, but I remember when I was managing people, uh, telling people I don't like people being late and I don't accept excuses, but, uh, uh, you know, it's a lot of money involved in this and I, I would hope that they would Keep in mind our needs are just as important as the big guy. Thank you. I can add one more comment too, sure. if that's all right. Um, we've, we've scheduled some uh, agreement reviews with our state's attorney's office in January, and one of the things that we're going to be looking at is adding some teeth to the, uh, the standard agreements that we have for our engineering consultants. Any other questions or comments? Commissioner Bender? DJ, can you just comment about how how this delay does affect your office? What it, what it I can. It's it's very significant. Right now, we're looking at budgeting and and trying to schedule projects for 2018, uh, specifically our pavement preservation, our chip seals, our microsurfacing, and our asphalt overlay. Uh, the best thing that we've done with our pavement preservation projects, aside from actually doing them, is scheduling those bids at the right time uh, in order to get really good prices. And so right now we're relying on this data that we don't have yet to schedule what roads we're going to do next year. And so until we have that data in hand, we're not going to be able to put together our plans and put our bids out. 
And so it, it could be a large enough delay that our bids are delayed and our prices are end, ending up higher than what they should have been, if that makes sense. We're, we're not happy about it. Any other, any other comments or questions? Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the uh, adjustment there. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to approve the IMS services agreement. All those in favor say aye. 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 All, those opposed nay, motion unanimously passes. Thank you. Thank you. Item 14 is to consider a motion to reject bids and authorize the publishing of notice for cleaning services. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Commissioners. Mark Krins, Facilities Department. On November 14th, the Commission gave authorization to the Auditor's Office to post notice to bid for contract cleaning for the county buildings. On November 29th, the Auditor and myself opened one bid from Marsden Services for the amount of $440,000 and two sixty-eight dollars for annual cleaning costs. Um, I had a couple inquiries from a couple other vendors that were interested in bidding, but just didn't have enough time as one of the weeks for bidding was over the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, I think it'd be beneficial to the county to reject these bids and rebid to get more competitive additional bids for the contract cleaning. So are there any questions for me? Any questions for Mark? Mr. Chairman, I guess for the state's attorney, can we reject these and then rebid it? Um, I don't think there's any prohibition. And uh, the, there's been a reservation to reject all bids. There was one bid, um, I think, that uh, in the interest of competition, which is the purpose of uh, bidding, um, the circumstances, I think, warrant uh, what uh, Mr. Creens has requested. Mr. Chairman, and that res with that, uh, I'll make a motion to reject this bid and to reopen. Uh, Thank you. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to reject the bids and reopen for cleaning services. Do you have a date, Mark, that you'd be looking at? Um, yeah, I sent them to Olivia. Let's see here. So we would uh, we would advertise next Monday, Wednesday, and the following Monday. And then what did I put down for a date? We were going to open the 10th. January 10th. So that give them an extra week okay. on top of the two weeks to put a bid together. Very good. Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item 15, uh, our county commission liaison reports. Any reports? Commissioner Barth. Uh, uh, Scott had a... Uh, uh, an event in his department yesterday which has caused some uh, damage to uh, one of our county vehicles and one mm. of our county employees oh. uh, so uh, he's going to show us a couple of pictures here Scott uh, our planning director why don't you go ahead and tell us uh, what happened uh, yesterday about 9 30 in the morning uh, our building inspector was involved in an accident uh, he was on uh, highway uh, 115 going north towards Del Rapids and a 19 year old um, flip that around. Oh my a 19 year old driver decided to pull a u-turn going in the middle of the highway going 60 miles an hour and uh, we t-boned him so it was not our and it wasn't our fault luckily no one was hurt and it's only stuff it can be replaced but both vehicles were totaled and uh, the young boy, uh, the young man that was driving really only came away with a scratch on his cheek, so luckily no one was ultimately hurt. Uh, the building inspector, um, I, we sent him to the doctor to check out because he had some body aches and pains. So um, yeah, the vehicles totaled out and uh, I guess that's what I have to tell you. And it was a half mile north of Midway Corner. Okay. so. I must there was a citation to yeah. the other driver. Yeah, he got a citation. You can see the in the background, our uh, sheriff's deputy was there, and uh, we had the vehicle towed to the county highway department, our vehicle. So uh, that will, I'm, insurance companies will be looking at it and whatnot, so uh, I'm thankful that DJ uh, let us 
tow our junk up there. So <laughs> DJ can fix it, can't you, DJ? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions. I mean, it happened you know a day ago, so we're still sort of working out the details. What uh, year was the vehicle that our, ours that was? Well, our vehicle was a 2004 expedition that we had originally gotten uh, received through from the highway department as a surplus vehicle many years ago. It had about 145,000 miles on it. It was not, you know, the best. I mean, it was not a high value vehicle by any means, but it still pl puts us in a, 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 a spot where we're going to have to do something. And eventually I'll probably be coming back to you to do something. We have, you know, five people using two vehicles and the building inspector is pretty much out every day doing stuff. I mean, he does 1,500 to 2,000 inspections a year, so he's out every day. Commissioner Heiberger. In the meantime, can we use the commission, one of the commission office vehicles or yeah. something or, or somebody else's Carol, vehicles? Um, I, I told Carol about the accident yesterday, and she did offer that. Um, DJ also offered to, that we maybe could borrow a vehicle once in a while. Uh, the insurance company ha is allowing us to get a rental vehicle for the, for a short time until, I guess, they work out the details. And so they're paying for a rental vehicle. We're going to be picking that up sometime shortly. So it was I, when I saw that, when I went up there and saw how bad that um, Buick Century looked, or yeah, Buick Century, I was just amazed that the young man was not seriously hurt because you can see that. His vehicle was completely caved in, and I've just. What was also surprising is that neither airbags in either vehicle went off, <laughs> which is frightening and by itself. But no airbags went off. But uh, yeah, uh, wow. so um, he's. We're all, everyone's lucky that no one was seriously hurt. I'm assuming that everybody was wearing seatbelts. Yes. Yeah. So. Thank God. Yeah, and the, the vehicles didn't roll. I mean, you, when you're going 60 miles an hour down that at that mm -hmm. speed and someone turns directly in front of you and you don't have a lot of time to react, and luckily it didn't, you know, the, the cars didn't roll or anything. It just, we're very, very lucky. All, and that's all I can say is given how bad his Chevy Century, or sorry, Buick Century got T-boned, it's just very, very lucky. I'd be in, in answering questions. Any or other questions? Thank you, Scott. Pick up a collection now, if, if it would be appropriate. <laughs> uh, any lay other liaison reports? Um, any new business? Any old business? Uh, before we go into exec session, uh, Maggie has some information that you'd like to uh, relay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just in follow-up to Commissioner Barth's question on the bidding, um, because of the uh, unanticipated question, I was conservative and said I don't think there's anything prohibiting uh, that action, but there is specific statutory authority um, for the rejection and then the rebid. Um, it's under 518A5 subpart uh, 6, which states that uh, uh, the uh, purchasing agency um, can reject and rebid if there, if none of the bids are satisfactory. Subpart so seven, excuse me. Is this your last meeting, or do I have to keep asking you so you tell me the right date, Mark? That's what, what I thought. Aww. Well, before we go into exec session, I think all of us want to wish you a very successful and happy and healthy and prosperous change to your new uh, banking career, so to speak. You've been a huge asset to the county and to the city and to the community for your work with the legislature and with the chamber. You've done a lot of things for a lot of people, and that doesn't include your previous life at Southeast Area of OTEC, if you will. <laughs> That's true. Sorry. But anyway, uh, we're going to be sorry to see you go, but we're happy that you're staying in Sioux Falls because you're, besides a class act, you're a huge asset to the community, and we wish you all the best. You're welcome. Thank you for your service. 
Give him a round of applause. <laughs> and you won't be here next week, so I won't forget. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'd like a motion to go into an exec session for contracts, <coughs> litigation, and personnel. That's my motion. Second. A motion for exec session for contracts, litigation, and personnel. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. We'll get together again in about five minutes.